All right, here we are in Illustrator, continuing our digital inking. I'm going to zoom in. And remember, I use my blob brush. I double click and I can have the settings. Right now, I have it with zero variation, which gives me kind of technical lines. But if I want to, if I have the ability to use the variation with my tablet, then that can give me thick to thin lines. And that's great to use if you have that option. Now, once you've done that, sometimes you need to clean it up. So I always use the small selection tool. And then I can use my pencil tool to redraw. And I can set that to different smooth settings. And that's often where I'll, I'll fix where the, the inking got a little out of hand, right? Where things kind of bled into each other, which happens all the time especially at corners. And again, this is an illustration, not a logo. These little blobs, all of that's, that's okay. None of that's a deal breaker for what we're trying to do. I love that smooth tool. Just cleans it right up. Or that smooth setting, rather. And for me, I've always been a sketcher. I always make more lines than I need. So it's difficult to just commit. It's called line confidence to get that kind of clean animator's line that you need if we're inking. But definitely being able to do the smooth helps that tremendously. Cleans it up for you. And then the pencil, get little bumps, little overlaps. It's all great. I'm going to try to go through this, convincing myself not to care too much if it's perfect, which can be difficult. Because we always want to show our best work. Now, in terms of a coloring book, we want these bold lines, right? That makes it fun for kids to draw or to color. In terms of digital coloring, which you're going to be doing, it's nice to have shapes that are self-contained when possible. So we're going to have a variety that are and a variety that aren't, probably in everyone's illustrations. But a fully contained shape would be like this bush if I had black pixels completely contain that, because that bush might be a different color than the grass underneath it. But all these little pieces of grass that I'm illustrating, these various gestural lines, they will all be just open. But this walking path, for instance, it might be a different color than the green grass around it. So you want that completely contained. Makes it easier to color behind, easier to select. And the butterfly's wing does a nice job of that. Cleaning that up. Remember, I can change my thickness settings at any time. But instead of trying to do it all with just the blob brush, I can use the pencil to clean up transitions. It's my magic scissors. I just have to be able to see the anchor points first, and then I have to be able to draw through the anchor points to redraw the line instead of making a new path. It's good to practice a light touch when you're using your tablet so you can really feel the difference between thick and thin. Just like when you're using a real inking brush at certain angles, 
the flow is going to be thicker. And you want to move quickly and deliberately, but not so fast that the computer can't keep up with you, which can happen with lots of tight curves. But then there's always the pencil tool to save you in the end. So I find it generally better. I do a lot of editorial cartoons and spot illustrations and sticker designs and t-shirt designs. I find it generally a lot better to do a varied line width rather than a, a strictly technical line width because it's more forgiving, right? If like my microscope, my microscope logo, everything had to be the same line weight, then it's really difficult to just correct it and erase from it because the line weights always have to even out. But this way I can work on the inside and the outside of each vector path. And it will look nice and clean. So I'm using spacebar as a shortcut just to kind of move around when I zoom in. That's the hand tool. I'm using command plus to zoom in, and then spacebar to drag over, then the pencil tool, and then command is my shortcut to get back to my small selection tool so that I can easily clean up the edges. And then command minus to zoom out. So just over and over again, this is how digital inking works within Illustrator using the blob brush, the pencil, the eraser, and the small selection tool. My, I am not a huge fan of the pen tool when doing this kind of work, but it just depends on your comfort with Illustrator. Also, because these are spot illustrations, you want to be aware of the overall shape you're making. So the bottom of your building, the bottom of the path, for instance. I don't want that to just be a hard edge necessarily. So I'm making it this kind of wavy more um, inviting line. And when I tried to do all these angles in one pass, you saw it kind of smoothed and averaged them all out. So sometimes it's better to break it up into a few different passes with your blob brush. Add a little organic texture here. Different sizes. Diversity is what's exciting to the eye. Diversity of line weight, diversity of shape. When everything's flat and exactly the same, our eye tends to lose interest. There's also the smooth tool underneath the pencil if you want to just average it out. If you don't want to have to redraw, but just kind of average out the, the line weight, you can do that. Right. In some ways, I don't mind these little variations. But it's great to have so much control as the artist. And it's easy to think that everything done in Illustrator is always perfectly clean, but if you actually look at professional logos or kind of semi-professional logos, like the ones you'll see on restaurant menus, and you look closely at them, you'll see all kinds of little mistakes. And you'll understand why, because now you have used Illustrator and it takes a lot of patience to deal with all these details to really clean it up. I 
I think digital inking is one of the most meditative types of digital art. You just kind of go with it. But it's a lot of repetition. A lot of doing the same things over and over. And the only thing that's more so is digital painting. Just like painting in real life, you're just using your brush and you're just building up stroke by stroke the textures and colors you want. And we'll be doing that closer to the end of the semester. So with a regular ink brush, when I wanted to kind of merge all that together, I would usually just ink it thicker and thicker, right? Here, if they're overlapping and the blob brush for whatever reason didn't combine them, like I can force them to combine by using the Pathfinder, which you can find under Window, and merge. And once they're combined, then I can use the pencil. For the most part, the blob brush does a good job of combining all of your, your marks as you go. So it's just one big continuous image. And that's why I use the blob brush rather than the regular brush tool. The regular brush tool, for whatever reason in Illustrator, is default set to give you a stroke instead of a fill path. And it each time you press down, it will create a new path that's not connected to the one before it. And for digital inking, that is not helpful. It's pretty annoying, actually. That's why the blob, blob brush was added as a tool. Now with these architectural lines, I could set it to be a fixed line weight, but I kind of like the challenge of using the brush with some variation. And then here I'm actually going to do a kind of sloppy job filling it in. See if I like that as part of the illustration. So you can actually build texture into your vector shapes if you want to. I might do that in here as well. Instead of filling it in completely, I might just kind of rough it in. When you fill it in completely, that's called full bleed. This is called linear hatching. You can do cross hatching. I can just thicken the shadow. But I encourage you, it's a coloring book, so you don't want to do that too much because it kind of takes away the fun of the coloring. Right? If there's not things to fill in. And when I see it from a distance, I think that's too heavy. So I'm just going to use lovely Command Z and wipe those clean. So always think of the big picture as you go. I'll be a little sloppier on these windows, give it some texture, you know, in the shadows of them, intentionally leaving little gaps, not worrying if they're perfectly square or not. It's where the curved perspective of the buildings helps, like making it Toontownish. ish 